So we're going to stitch down our placement line onto our medium cutaway stabilizer, which has been hooped. Then we're going to place our batting on top, and underneath the batting I've got a layer of our Tex bag stiffener. That just gives the flap and the outside body of this wallet a little bit more rigidity and a bit of more of what I call a skeleton, so as it holds the project into shape. Trim the batting and um, bag techs back to two to three millimeters away from our stitching. Now we're going to stitch the placement line for our internal contrast fabric. Make sure the right side of this fabric is at least half an inch past our outside stitching because that's going to be a seam allowance to sew onto our um, panels for our back and front panels when we've actually completed the flap. Stitch around, remove from the hoop, trim back one to two millimeters from the stitching, and let's do our cross hatching. If you've got a pattern which is strong like this one, you need to make sure that it's on a, a really good true angle so as that your cross hatching doesn't look silly. If you have a particular um if you have a particular pattern, make sure it's centralized or off to one side to make sure that it looks nice and balanced. We're laying our main fabric on now, we're covering all edges. We're just going to stitch around the perimeter edge of the flap, keep this nice and taut. And it's going to come inside where that contrast is because we're going to remove this hoop and we're going to um, trim around where the contrast is. And then put our cross hatching on the external color, which is fabric A this is going to be our main fabric for the back and the the back and front and the edges of this flap this is one of our main fabrics and then we're going to go on and do our satin stitch on that line between the contrast and the main fabric very simple very effective lay our lining on now the lining is got a layer of light interfacing added to it just to give it some body and so it can hold the magnetic closure we don't want that pulling out because it will be a high use uh, closure because of the nature of it being a wallet. Make sure it's stable and secure onto the lining. Now we do our triple stitch, which stitches just inside that first single row. Just inside. Gives a little bit of a railway track around the outside edge. Just that triple stitch is nice and firm. So it's very, very important that you do actually have the right thread so as you don't get um, any grin of a poor colour choice coming through on the right side once we turn our work through. If you've got good tension, it doesn't matter. Right, remove from the hoop. First of all, I'm going to actually trim my top seam. I go over to the back because it's got a nice firm seam there, half inch seam at the top of the flap, at the opening. And then with my scissors, I'm just going to trim very close, sort of like a couple of millimetres away from our stitching, two to three millimetres away from our stitching. So it needs to be very, very, what I call either a large eighth or a shy quarter, because I don't want to actually have too much in there because I don't want a great big lump around the edge of my flat. I want it to be quite flat. Let's turn it through. Turn the curve through on your thumb, and they usually turn through very, very easily. And a good press, and there we're done. We're going to do make the back and the front panel, so we're going to put our placement line on our medium cutaway stabilizer. This is very, very simple. It's just a matter of mattering of layering three fabrics on top of each other. So our batting and our bag tech stabilizer or stiffener, just to give the outside shell of the wallet some rigidity. Stitch that around through all layers, take it out, trim back one to two millimeters away from the stitching. Add our main fabric on top. Stitch it into position. And then let's do our cross hatching.
once that's completed, we take it out and trim it up so we've got half inch seams all around the outside edge. We're making two. Let's make the zip pockets and the credit card pockets. These look more complicated than they really are. They are this are really actually a very simple panel. So do our placement and then we're going to add an extra layer of medium cutaway. Don't want to put batting in this because I don't want it to be thick and sponging. I think it's too, uh, I think the bag stabilizer, the text bag stabilizer is, is too thick for this. So we actually stitch that down and then trim it back to one to two millimeters away from the stitching. It's just to give it a little bit of body where the credit cards um, are going to sit, but we don't want rigid. So we're going to do our placement line for our zipper. So remembering when we're putting a zipper on, we do our placement line, then we put our zip into place. I generally tape it, but with this zipper and this placement, there the foot sits right against the edge of the zipper. So I'm often a bit naughty and don't do that. Make sure that your puller is to the left hand side of your zipper for when it's closed, because that's how it should be. So we've stitched that into position. And before we go too much further, we need to cut out a window behind where the zipper is. We just cut the, the um, cutaway away from the back of the zipper, because normally we'd use a tearaway, but I don't want to use this tearaway in this particular panel, because it will be too light, and I don't want it to be fragmented when we're using the pockets for the credit cards. Now, with our first piece of our lining for our back pocket, we want to put it face down just past our zip line, um, our, our, our zip line, and when we turn it, we're going to stitch this through so it's going to hang down, and when we actually, um, we need to fasten it to our, our hoop, and when we actually stitch it, it's going to stay up in that position until we've done all our pockets, then it's going to come down and be the first part of our pocket bag. So that's been stitched into position there, and it's gonna stay wrapped around the hoop until we do the, the rest of the pockets. So let's add on our long strip of pocketing, or our long strip of lining for the inside of the, um, the wallet, and this is going to be our flip and fold pockets for our credit cards. Stitching on, Pull it taut, finger press down there, and then let's stitch our outline of our first pocket. Right, so pull the fabric to the right hand side again, finger press, keep it taut, and all it is going to do is stitch the depth of the pocket both on the top and the bottom of the hoop. Sorry, my arm's in the way there. So it's just going to stitch either side. Then we pull that fabric down again and make it taut against those top stitches and do the next step, so which is a straight line, which is the bottom of the next row of pockets, and so on and so on. So we're going to do, to do the, the top and bottom steps. Top and bottom steps for the second row of pockets, so there we are. Row one, row two. So this is the bottom of row three. So altogether we'll actually have six pockets um, for credit cards on either side of the wallet. So that's 12 cards pockets. On the smaller size, the uh, five by seven, one set of pockets will be horizontal for, for your credit cards, the other ones will be skinnier and vertical because we need the width to get the, the card into the pocket. Right, so that's the base of our three sets of pockets. And now we're going to do the divider line, where it serves as a double row of triple stitch. Right, here we have it. So just make sure that we know where that zip puller is staying. So we're going to pull our fabric that was wrapped around our hoop back down into position, tape it. Return our hoop and then stitch that outline. So it's going to be stitched down, around the sides, up to the zip, and then top stitch along that area. Right. 
Let's remove our tape and put our second row of the second layer of pocketing on. Now that needs to cover the top zip where the window where we've cut out of the zip it needs to cover that because it's going to be stitched into place. Pull your zip stopper down into the middle of the work so you know where it is. We're going to have to fiddle with this and move it while we're stitching um, because we don't want to stitch over it, but it, and it is going to get in the way. Put a couple of pieces of washi tape over the zip teeth so as that they don't get stuck on the foot. So we're stitching our pocket into place. Now just hold fire, pull that down, stop, pull that zip up, and let's carry on. Sometimes the undersides of the pockets come, and come to grief, and they're like they fold themselves over because they have not been stuck down enough there. That happens to me sometimes, but don't worry about it, just unders just Reverse stitch, unpick the stitches and start again. So here we have our back of our pocket bag. We want to trim back all the seams back to as close to quarter of an inch, six mils all the way around, just so as that we can reduce our bolt. We don't want any excess in the seams for this wallet because it's going to be too hard to turn out. So let's, let's reduce it as much as we can. So that's all there, and then same with the sides, we want to trim back as close to that stitching as we can. Trim through the zip, making sure that our zip stopper is in the middle of our work and we haven't just trimmed it off. I sometimes even go a bit closer than that. Lay our side border strip of fabric on. Make sure it comes up past the zip tape of the, the top of the zip. Stitch down. And then flip and fold and zip into position. So we put the edge of this fabric sort of quarter of an inch past that side stitching which we've trimmed back. Doesn't have to be very much, just has to be a quarter of an inch, that's all. So it's flip and fold, flip down towards us. Hold it taut and let the machine just stitch it into position. So that's our sides done. I can hear you holding your breath going, he's going to stitch through it. No, I'm not. I put that tab out there so I don't know where to stop. You can um, stitch this down, but it's basically stitching. This top section is just goes just a little bit past your top of your zip tape. And finger press that across. Moves down. So that stitches the perimeter of our block. We're basically finished. So we're going to remove that from the hoop and then trim back all sides to a half an inch. We need a pair of those. Simple but effective and really professional looking. The dividers are really, really simple to make. They really are. We need to make three dividers for this project you can have two you can have one it doesn't matter so we stitch our our um, outline of our perimeter stitching or placement stitching on a piece of tearaway then i'm going to place a piece of uh, medium cutaway and stitch that down then trim the, the all the edges back to one to two millimeters away from the stitching Okay, so we're, we've hooped up with tear away. Now, I've interfaced my, my um, fabric with a light piece of interfacing, and I want to have 
I want to lay this so that it covers all the stitching. And on the right hand side of the hoop, I want to make sure that I've got at least half an inch past that row of stitching because that's going to be my seam allowance, which is half an inch. Okay, so that's going to stitch three sides. Then we fold it over like a page and make sure that creased fold is sitting. Well, let me turn that around so I can show you. It needs to be sitting just on top of that row of stitching that we've got at the top of that's holding our um, medium cutaway on. So you can either hold it with your fingers tautly or you can tape it. We're just going to be stitching down our two sides because we're creating a, what we call a bag because we're going to be bagging out once we've actually trimmed. Move it from the hoop. Okay, so that's that folded edge at the top. Open edge at the bottom. Pull our tear away from the, all the edges. I love tearing away, tear away. It's quite satisfying. Take the extra layer that's sitting on top of that um, medium cutaway off. So we're left there with just the cutaway and the fabric, which has been folded. So we want a half inch seam at the bottom. And then a, sh well, a shy quarter inch seam at the sides. When I say shy, I mean a small, more than an eighth, but less than a quarter. So, we then need to just turn it through and push our points out with our pink thing. There we go. And for this particular sample, I needed to make three. Oh, that's right, I made a coloured one in the middle. One, two, three. Fun. So last but least, we're going to make our side gussets. So what I call our accordion gusset for the side. This is going to hold our dividers into position. So we need to place, put a placement line on and then put our, um, well, our first piece of fabric. I think that's... Um, well, I've matched it so as it matches the interior of the wallet. It's up to you. You need to have at least half an inch of, of extra fabric past that left-hand seam. And then we're going to put our marking. Now, this is not seam because these, these stitches are actually in, on the edge of the dividers within the end. So these are our placement lines which divide our sections up. Then we put our, our outside fabric, which I have a layer of... Um, interfacing on so it's that into position and then it does its triple stitch back because it's going to be a finished edge and it creates our half circle crescent which actually stitches along the edge of our wallet and then it pleats in to actually hold our dividers up quite fun quite simple now the next step is optional this last step we actually have a little half crescent and I think well, using a domestic machine, using that half crescent just makes it easier to sew onto the end of the, or sorry, the edge of the, um, see, they, they wrap around that. That's what holds those together. But having that crescent means it's a bit free at the bottom, so you don't have to go down to a point at the fold of your wallet. You'll see that, actually, in other wallets. Um, um, it has a crescent. Okay, so we just want a half inch seam at the bottom of our gusset. Hard to see, the, see where the accordion happens. It's, just, it's not until it's stitched into place that you actually get that pleated accordion effect. Pull out our tearaway, because we made this on, on tearaway stabilizer. 
So all the only interface it's got is actually on the main section of the fabric has a light layer of interfacing. Try not to pull out your placement marks. Your placement marks are permanent. They won't be seen once the, uh, once the wallet's finished. So I want to trim a shy quarter of an inch around the edge. Probably a quarter of an inch is good. Clip your curves in if you want to. I, I, I haven't. I just roll it when I'm pressing. And at the bottom, you will want to do a very sort of a, a large eighth or a you know, generous eighth of an inch around the bottom there. Made that look really awkward, didn't I? Clip into your curve. Now we're going to turn this through and give it a press. Okay, that's what it looks like. We have a pair of those with our placements. <laughs>